to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. While, while standing, I want you to please help me bless the man of God, such an incredible man and his lovely wife. God bless you, sir. Truly, truly appreciate you. Hallelujah. I can tell you, beyond being such a great man of God, your man of God is a very good man. He truly is. He truly is. And then don't forget to appreciate his wife, too. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please help me appreciate my dear friend and brother, Pastor Jakes, and his dear wife. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. I really want to salute this church and this ministry. I have discerned and I have seen for myself a depth of spiritual seriousness. And, and I submit to you that it is not a regular occurrence everywhere. It takes intention to drive people to really love God and to want to touch the core of his heart. Here and there we can be doing church activities and just, but there are a few people who are really interested in diving deep. And these are the people that will touch dimensions of God, especially in this end time. And I salute you. Weeks turning to months of intense prayer and fasting. No. Even if it's to the devil you have done it, you will not be the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to share tonight uh, or this, this afternoon, wherever we stop, I, I like meetings like this because thank God for the excellence and some of these things. But sometimes those things are wonderful and they can interrupt very defining prophetic moments. Um, so we'll work with time, but I trust that God will help us. When your man of God was speaking here, I truly believed everything he was saying. I knew that he was not just, he was not just a preamble to the message. Hallelujah. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises up. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart, this and shores and the Father, help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Open up our spirits and do wonders in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated. I'll be saying many things, but for caption, um, I'll be teaching on God's end time agenda. God's end time agenda. The goal is... To help us really understand God's program, His emphasis even within this season, and to know how to position ourselves and to position our spirits to be useful. Hallelujah. The Bible is speaking about the men of Issachar. It says, and of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times, that they knew what Israel ought to do, and they became captain even over their brethren, because they could discern the times. Hallelujah. 
I submit to you that many believers have not been methodically mentored to number one, understand Jesus, number two, to understand the kingdom, number three, to understand God's program. If you do not understand these three things I just mentioned, no matter what else you learn, your journey will be lopsided because you will not be able to find a place for every other thing you talk about. That means if you remove Jesus from the knowledge of the believer, if you remove the kingdom from the consciousness of the believer, and if you remove God's program, you can go ahead and teach on prosperity, teach on healing, teach on anointing. There will be isolated truths that cannot coordinate themselves to do much. Please listen carefully. The truths of the kingdom, thank you, thank you so very much. The truths of the kingdom do not work in isolation. Truth connects to truth. Are we together now? And up front, I want you to know, in order of priority, if you remove Jesus, if you remove the kingdom, the consciousness of the kingdom, and if you remove the consciousness of God's prophetic program and agenda, you are no longer a threat to the devil. He will not mind any other thing you say and teach. It will have very minimal effect. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, and I submit to you that a major part of the body of Christ um, have been in and still continue to be in ignorance as to this person. You would think because we call Jesus all the time, we know him. Hallelujah. He said, who do men say that I am? It was a question he was asking people who were walking with him every day. They were not strangers who would visit and go. Those who came for his crusades were strangers. They would come, enjoy the miracles. But these were people who walked with him for over three years. And one day, he said, who do men say that I am? A debate started. They said, you are Elijah. You are one of the prophets. And then he said, all right, leave them. Who do you say? that I, the son of man, is. And to their shock, none of them could answer that question. Except Peter speaking by the Spirit. He said, I know who thou art. Not we know. It's a personal revelation. I know who thou art. He says, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That means this is not within the realm of flesh and blood. Jesus Christ is the epicenter of the Christian faith. Not breakthrough, not healing, not church, not anointing, not man of God, not power, not miracles. It is important that we reorder. You see, the way you build, uh, there are many people here I presume who are architects or are into architecture. If you want to build, even if you have the right materials, the sequential arrangement matters. You cannot put a zinc at the foundation, although a zinc is required in the building. So largely what we do in the body of Christ is we just gather truth and randomly communicate them, not knowing we are building a structure. Are we together? So most believers are not in ignorance, but they are unable to handle the word of truth in a way that produces that effect. They know something about prayer. They know something about the Holy Ghost. They know something about fasting. They know something about healing. They know something about the importance of the anointing. They know something about church. They know something about, but then in the face of real life situation, even though they have all the ingredients, they are unable to combine it effectively to produce victory. It is for this reason he said in Jeremiah 3.15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And he says that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. They are not just reminding you of what you know. They are sequentially arranging it line upon line, precept upon precept, so that you understand. You not only have the tools but that you can be able to use these tools to command victory in your own life and then to do much for the kingdom. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. I submit to you therefore that the major problem in the body of Christ is not ignorance. I do not believe 
the body of Christ is in ignorance scattered across from Nigeria parts of Africa across the globe here and there God has helped and raised people who have communicated different dimensions of kingdom truth and this we have to admit we have seen the mercy of God as far as revelation dishing out truth in the body of Christ is concerned but there are two major problems with the body of Christ number one is imbalance imbalance exaggerating truth beyond their assigned jurisdiction of relevance imbalance imbalance is as destructive as error exaggeration of truth beyond their assigned jurisdiction are we together We've not started talking about God's agenda. We're just laying a foundation. Wherever we stop, no problem, we'll pray. Imbalance. Listen, many of you here, I believe you cook and you cook well, especially the women. If you go to the kitchen to cook, there are ingredients that you just need a pinch of them. And that's fine. Is that true? For instance, salt. If you want to cook a pot of rice and you fetch, say, three or four handfuls of rice and then you also the same amount of salt is that good cooking but is salt needed you see that something so glorious can be the basis of your ruining a complete meal because it was stretched beyond its border beyond its jurisdiction i hope you know that both good and evil came from the same tree so it is not only evil that can kill good too can kill they all came out of the same tree what god gives is not just good is life not every good brings life there were two trees in eden one was called the tree of life one was called the tree that contained good and evil are we together so if satan tries to use error and it does not work he will use the good that you know and now reconfigure it in a way that hurts you and destroys you so here and there we see that many people have been victims of good teaching in the body of christ but exaggerated beyond their jurisdiction of relevance imbalance imbalance very very important imbalance the second error in the body of Christ is the refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God the refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God and there is an explanation for that oh dear please get this teaching get this teaching already please Get it and use it for your personal retreat and help somebody with it who you know really loves God. If I stop here, what I said, as simple as it sounds, is already a miracle. The refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God. And there is an explanation for that. Are we together? Now, you see, the way God builds people, the way God builds people is that when God calls you, listen carefully, based on the calling and the election of grace that is upon your life god will tilt you towards a spiritual dimension to know him in a certain way that at the point you are learning him that way you will not know that it is incomplete and he left it intentionally so that at the end of your training you will know him so much and his ways in a dimension but he does not intend for you to run with it in isolation there is someone else who has another dimension that is not captured in your experience but is needed for the overall growth of the body now the challenge is because of my excelling in the dimension that was committed to me you will assume i know everything and my pride will not allow me humble myself and admit that there are other dimensions needed in the body that were not captured in my training so i now begin to mentor people to reflect my limitation and i do that by teaching them that any dimension that is not captured in my spiritual experience is not needed for them so chances are excellent 
that if God has raised me excuse me to be say an administrator and to be a leader over people you will be surprised that the scope of my training will capture in a rich dimension the spirit of wisdom but I may not encounter the spirit of prayer and supplication it does not mean I will not pray that dimension will not be well hosted in my experience so if through leadership I now begin to build formidable systems I can now see a man of God who is given to prayer and say look at these people instead of them because I'm seeing the deficiency of what leadership should do in his structure rather than knowing that this dimension should complement so you can look across the body of Christ and you can discern with surgical precision the dimensions that have been ignored in churches in lives you can know that the prayer ministry was embraced but wisdom was ignored you can know that wisdom was ignored uh, wisdom was not ignored they are wealthy they are blessed but their spirit man is weak you can look and know that these people have ignored the prophetic to their detriment embracing the whole counsel of God when Jesus took the bread remember at the Last Supper he took the bread which he said he was himself he broke himself into different dimensions nobody in that dinner table carried all the bread everybody carried a piece of the bread so if you carry a piece and you believe you have all he was the one who broke himself so it's not error he broke himself deliberately so that if all of him must come back everybody must come with the peace that he was given Is someone learning so I can carry my piece of bread and teach it accurately that is good but now the marking script will not be how well I taught it will be how well I taught and how well I aligned my piece of bread with respect to the rest if I now ignore a ministry that reflects a dimension that was not captured in my experience let me tell you what will happen the multiplier effect will happen especially in those you are raising and leading and mentoring so you find out that there are people who are mighty prayer warriors fasting giants but they are poor they are broke there is no influence their lives their children are hooligans because they cannot the things that pertain unto life and godliness they do not have then you have those who are rich and influential carnally minded and church is just a jamboree of flesh absolutely nothing spiritual there don't forget what i just said the two major challenges with the body of christ number one imbalance exaggeration of truth beyond its jurisdiction beyond its assigned jurisdiction and then number two the refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God the whole counsel of God by reason of my spiritual training and my my environment how I grew up both physically and spiritually I didn't come from a background that came close to capturing the holistic dimension of God that would bless me and I thank God because I recognized this early in life and ministry and I had to come to a point where I would choose to just press towards the dimension I was having or to now open myself to be able to embrace other dimensions that were not yet in my experience but were needed for my overall growth when we started with God it was matters of spiritual encounters fasting prayer consecration pressing towards the things of God but I remember very clearly I think that was 2007 we were doing well in other aspects but other areas like wisdom a transformed mind financial prosperity understanding the principles of influence territorial dominion they were not captured in our experience it took an encounter with the Lord to now begin to tell me that there are other virgin dimensions spiritually that I was not coming into and then I now began to source for materials 
from gifts across the body of Christ with proven track records to now supplement and to complement that which God was doing and I am grateful to God for that decision I honor your man of God and his wife among many reasons for these that I just mentioned the ability to open up even to this dimension of God that he can bring so that you can be holistically edified are we together you have prayed you have fasted you have given yourself to sound doctrine and to teachings but believe me when i tell you it is amazing how many other dimensions of god is still out there waiting for our hunger to draw it to us hallelujah is someone blessed even things like walking in the anointing i have seen people touch very little dimensions of it and then come there because our definition of walking in the anointing is the ability for someone to fall down probably in your presence and that is enough accreditation that you are anointed what a shame to our understanding you go and read the bible and really see the things that prove the presence of the power of god the ultimate test of authority and power in scripture is found in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4. The Bible says, and God said, and there was. And he saw what he said, and it was good. Four tests. If you say it, and it becomes, and we see it, and what appears is good, you are powerful every other thing you are just at a kindergarten level of understanding spiritual power the centurion understood this he said for i am a man under authority i have soldiers under me and i say to one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh do this do that he said i know you are under authority speak the word only jesus said i've not found such faith who taught you this who mentored you to understand that the zenith of spiritual power is the ability to use words and create possibilities that means you don't care what was there before you arrived and god said and there was and he saw that it was good so more than falling down and rising up more than all of those things that you can sustain stamina in the spirit now you really are a blessing because when you say god bless you they know it's not an empty statement it comes within it a climate within itself to create the possibility spoken hmm. like the rod of aaron that budded just because you did not see the root does not mean there was no root the root was the word from whence it came so you can step into an atmosphere of chaos and create through words a spiritual climate and you will see a tree springing from chaos and you can't trace where the root is where is this drawing its nourishment from it's coming from the word that you have spoken to the point that jesus never calls himself anointing but he calls himself the word the locus of god I have taught again that anointing does not bring the word anointing is derived from the word the word of God is head even over powers Colossians 1 16 the Bible says please give us Colossians 1 and verse 16 for by him who is the him the word where all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether there be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i thank god and i honor him for the privilege to be able to join hands with your pastor and to bring us into greater levels of spiritual understanding so that from the standpoint of accuracy we can now reveal the glory of God even more accurately in John um, Acts chapter 18 
the Bible talks about a man called Ananias is that true and the Bible says that man was great he was mighty in scripture he was eloquent he was taught the way of the Lord the Bible says but he knew only the baptism of John one day he was preaching in a conference like this believing he was impressing everyone and there were two strange people seated in the meeting watching his limitation called Aquila and Priscilla the Bible says after his lecture they called him and expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly if he had written a book he would write his limitation and if he was an arrogant man he probably would say this is all there is full stop where there should be a comma father we pray that you will help us we desire to be people who are entire people who are complete people who will be able to do much for you and for your kingdom even within our lifetime we desire to learn you we desire to understand your ways spirit of the living god it is for this cause you were sent to us help us you are called helper open us up to the truth you are called the spirit of truth and indeed that you will comfort us we thank you in the name of jesus christ so we're looking at god's end time agenda god has an agenda god has a program and there are three levels of power and anointing number one there is the level of power and anointing that comes into your life by reason of being grafted into Christ, your oneness with him. When you become one with Christ, you can draw strength from your union with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 amplified. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. And then amplified says, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. So the first dimension of power and strength is that which comes from your union with Christ through the new birth experience. The second dimension of power is that which comes by reason of your office. That when God calls you among the five things that validate the call of God upon a man is that spiritual empowerment. He empowers you for the assignment. So there is an anointing that is not just upon you, it's upon your office. For as long as you occupy that office, you can be dying as an individual, and yet that grace still remains on your office as you function. So it is possible for a man to not be doing well spiritually, and yet excel in his office. You can use the grace upon his office to wrongly mark the script that he is doing well. Elisha died as a person and yet his bones there was a residue of grace upon him because he did not hand over to any prophet so he died there it was not the grace upon his life he was weak and sick and died yet the anointing that was upon him somebody a, a, a dead body meandered into the grave and came back to life there is the anointing that is upon your office but number three, there is the anointing that is upon you by reason of your discerning and aligning to God's program per season. There is the anointing, the spiritual empowerment that comes upon your life by reason of your alignment and the fortitude to discern what the Spirit of God is doing per season. So it is possible to see in this end time people demonstrate certain levels of power and grace beyond that which was just given generally to the believer even beyond that which their office should command there is an extra grace that they carry by reason of being intentional about god's program hallelujah write this down our corporate mandate the first thing I want to reveal to us by the Spirit of God is that regardless the geography of your assignment, regardless what it is that God has called you to do, 
as believers in Christ we have a corporate mandate our corporate mandate is that which drives everyone who names the name of Christ and everyone who has been born into this spiritual experience even by the word and by the spirit two scriptures validate our corporate mandate number one is John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 this represents our corporate mandate as believers John chapter 1 6 to 7 the Bible says there was a man that man was sent from God whose name was John he was not sent as John he only had the name John when he arrived the earth are we together the verse 7 the same came for a witness so John's assignment was not to be a prophet John's assignment was not to be a Baptist John's assignment was to be a witness of the light that all men through his effective witness might believe that is not only true for John it is true for every believer no matter who you are whether in business in politics in ministry as we know believers must be mentored to understand our corporate mandate regardless the geography of your assignment you are sent from God and that your assignment is to be a witness to be a witness of the light that men through your witness might believe are we together number two acts chapter one popular scripture and then verse eight the believers preparing at the, the upper room for the experience of the baptism here's what jesus told them before leaving at this time jesus had returned and he gathered all of them and he was talking they began to talk to him he was talking about the restoration of all things and they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put within his care verse 8 now says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that the purpose of that power is that you will be witnesses never said preachers never said businessmen never said politicians all those titles simply represent the geography of your assignment but from the mind of god as far as we are called believers are classified twofold according to our identification and according to our function when believers are classified according to our identification we are one with christ we are joint heirs these are all names that represent our identification but if it is now according to our function he calls us light he calls us salt he calls us ambassadors and now he calls us witnesses are we together so that our corporate mandate as believers is to know that number one we are sent from god number two we are witnesses and that men are depending upon the efficiency of our witness to believe there was a man sent from god his name was your pastor the same came for a witness when you look at the blueprint and the script of the life and destiny of your pastor prophetically you may not necessarily see the name of this church or this program or today's program you will see a general caption that he was sent from eternity into time as a witness that through his witness men might believe so the proof of your witness is not activities who is believing because of your witness many activities can be ongoing and when God marks your script, he finds out conferences are happening, conventions. I'm saying that respectfully. You see that there are so many activities in the body of Christ. And I believe that they are well-intentioned activities. But when you vet them from the lens of this assignment, many of them fall short. Sincerely, I will tell you. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. The same came for a witness that through his witness all might believe you have no business talking about power until you understand this assignment of a witness you shall receive power and it is connected to your being a witness are we together now that means the more you are effective in your being a witness you justify the release and the multiplication of greater spiritual power even for efficiency if we are together say amen 
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witness please write the word witness down who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim that means the primary assignment of a witness is to justify the speakings of another that means if there is a contention over something that was said it is the assignment of a witness to clear all doubts it is the assignment of a witness to bring to end every confusion as to the validity of a statement are we together a number of us here i believe are into uh, legal practice or the judicial system and you understand that when you are in the court of law uh, usually if someone brings a statement the judge will say do you have a witness because someone is negating that statement so they would call someone who would come and stand in the box and swear by whatever he believes in and say I would tell the truth and nothing but the truth were you there yes I was there hiding somewhere now how will believers receive the mandate of being witnesses when we were not there when he died what gives the audacity then to be a witness because when he died we were not born and yet we are supposed to tell the world that statement was not a lie when jesus said everything he said as captured in scripture we were not there and yet he says we will still be witnesses and he sent one to be with us who was there that in partnership two of us now become witnesses because although i was not there he was there are we together now and so if i do the speaking he does the confirmation we have to work together if i isolate him my witness will be poor because i will propose many things i will not have the grace to defend so he said i will not leave you comfortless you are frail by yourselves but i will come to you sending us that paraclet the spirit of god he now comes and you in partnership with him he said tarry ye don't be in a hurry to go zealously you will meet a rude shock on your way until you are empowered the spirit of god that one encounter empowered them and they stood and preached on the resurrection with power and authority the bible says with great power they gave witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all not some all hallelujah everybody say i am a witness you have to indoctrinate yourself to believe this if you think i am a banker you will rob yourself from god's divine program if you think i am a prophet religiosity and ministry will destroy you if you say i am a pastor the headache of ministry will bring you down if you say i am a businessman the king of tyre is sitting on that mountain and waiting for you he will not ask you what you are buying and selling uh -uh. on that mountain the commodity of exchange is your soul and the world not your products are we together one more time say i am a witness there are terrorists today who are in the university studying do you know that so while students are attending lectures they are there in a medical class and you would think that because they are there they intend to help the world it is part of the assignment the person knows he's first a terrorist before a medical student and when he when they are teaching on the subject that relates to how people can die he will listen carefully because that is really where that is his core area of assignment he intends to use it because without backing that degree he cannot be given access to that space so while he's there attending lectures every day sponsored by powers that you do not know you think he's an ordinary student that is the same way you are too just because you are going to walk like everybody and greeting them and signing the register in the morning you are more than a banker you are more than an architect the reason why you have reduced yourself and just defined yourself by your geography you are a witness everybody say i am a witness say it to yourself convincingly i am a witness so if you are a man of god you are a witness behind the pulpit if you are a businessman you are a witness in the marketplace the marketplace is a place of exchange exchange of anything including the souls of men 
when you read revelations 19 it talks about babylon go and read what she she trades with she can trade anything including the souls of men so when you say you are a businessman it's more than buying and selling you are one who defends the interest of god at the marketplace when you say you are a lawyer we call you lawyer but you are a witness so prophecy and baptism were tools that john used to be a witness and how well he used them except that at the end of his life he forgot he was a witness he was offended over the light he was supposed to bear that witness to he got it right and said that i may decrease that you may increase offense got to him and he now sent the same jesus he ordained he said go and ask him are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus healed the sick and said go and tell john what you have saw what you have seen he said blessed is he who is not offended in me offense brought him cheaply when he forgot he was a witness a birthday present his head was used what satan could not do what witches and wizards could not do what what the, the this guy was a threat even to government for as long as he knew he was a witness but when he lost that identity a lady's dance took his head a lady's dance not the king's decree that is how cheap we can become when we lose that bishopric that we are witnesses your immunity is in your understanding that you are a witness the one who sent you makes it a point of duty to defend you he says when i sense you lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent you please pray in the spirit in one minute i am a witness declare it let it be from the core of your spirit i am a witness i am a witness in the name of jesus a witness behind the pulpit i am a witness as a media person i am a witness as an architect a witness as a kingdom millionaire billionaire i am a witness as a politician i don't define myself by my geography of witness i am a validator of the claims of jesus myself in partnership with the spirit of god hallelujah praise the name of the lord in the book of revelation chapter one when the voice that spoke to John in the Isle of Patmos was describing Jesus himself, one of the many names he was called was the faithful witness, Jesus. Are we together? The Bible says John was in the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of Jesus that he sent, he, he heard the word and it was sent and signified by his angel. And now he began to describe that one because he saw the glory of heaven and he saw seven lampstands. He says, and in the midst of the lampstand, he began to describe one like the son of man. And he was called the faithful witness. The witness who did his assignment to the satisfaction of the father. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I never carry the mentality that I'm a preacher. I never carry the mentality of a celebrity. I never carry the mentality of most of these things. No, I am a witness. I remain a witness. Whether on pulpit, I am a witness. Anywhere, I'm a witness. That means God has liberty to call on my attention anywhere there is need for validation. So I can be on my way to bed and something is happening in the earth and there is need satan is contending see let me tell you how satan works because man is the zenith of god's creation am i wasting your time because man is the zenith of god's creation listen carefully the greatest way to indict the integrity of god is to use man as a canvas and write a statement through him that indicts the integrity of God so when Satan afflicts you is more than sickness he's using that disease as a pen on your body to indict the integrity of God the entire creation being the witness and so there is a need for heaven to reply back but we 
need a witness who is the witness who will stand to reply that statement and so for a long time because of the absence of a witness creation will have to use that aberrated story to believe God is not faithful but then a witness comes and that witness says in the name of Jesus be healed that healing is God's reply back now to Satan through creation that I am still seated on the throne signed by my witness are you seeing that now so by the time you call it healing and you clap for the man of God but there is a bigger essence to that miracle in the spirit everything that stops the saints from rising to their full prophetic potential is a letter from Satan through man to God the reply will come from God through his witnesses that means whatever it takes you to be able to effectively communicate that reply it is within the power of God to give you this is the correct basis for praying for power Lord empower me what for I'm tired of feeling like I'm not anointed too small a reason too small a reason give me another reason empower me because I see that there is need to validate your name across a territory and God says now you are speaking my language what do you need prosperity he will shift heaven and earth and even if it is for a fish to give you coin there are people who pray once and you see heaven rush to them it's not because they are saying any other thing their state has been glued to the program of God they know that they are witnesses father your name is about to suffer reproach and he stands up standing behind them as a mighty terrible one listen when you have this understanding it will change the dynamics of your Christian experience I am a witness so when someone says over your dead body to rise he didn't talk to you ah he didn't talk to you when David stood before Goliath, if he went in his name and by his authority, he would have been surprised. He would have been a lesson for the nation of Israel to learn. But he went there and Goliath was roaring and shouting and the young boy stood there. You come to me with your bows, you come to me with your spheres, but I come to you as a witness in a name. There is an authority that is bigger than what you see. I truly believe that any part of Goliath that sling touch, he will still fall down. It was not about the accuracy of the hitting. It was about a message that the power of God could move through that sling and bring Goliath down. Everybody say, I'm a witness. Please get this revelation. Say, I'm a witness. Now, please look up. There are many of you here who God has helped to rise commendably, whether in the civil service, uh, the, the civil service or whatever, um, um, firm that you work in do you know that when they promote you to certain levels certain rankings there are privileges connected to it like an official car am I right like an official house other people you even have security agents that work with you this is also true for the realm of the spirit it is true there are blessings that come on account of your determination to be witnesses when he sent them in his name two by two the Bible says they returned in shock and said even the devils were subject to us in your name and Jesus said no do not rejoice just about that rejoice that your names are written in heaven and then he said I saw Satan fall like lightning they were surprised ordinary us but we went in a name and as we got there when we were hungry someone just came to give us food Jesus what happened explain to us why we've been living begging for bread but now that you sent us how many days we went and returned no hunger when you know you are a witness you expect Abuja to do something to you that means the one who sent you should speak to the territory and say hear ye him hear ye him means whatever it makes for his sufficiency make it available Please believe what I'm telling you. And so you can be sitting quietly and the one who sent you can wake someone and say, make sure this my servant does not beg. 
when Jesus was ready to carry out his ministry he had the audacity to send them he says go to the streets that divides and you will find a coat that no man had written on and if they ask you say the master had need of it and they lose that coat and brought it for him and it was a triumphant entry there are many people here that are cold, tied, that even the owner has not ridden upon because he's a caretaker. But your mentality as a witness is what begins to release these things to you. Let me tell you this. A witness is not distracted by the current results. He's focused on the assignment. So all the blessings that happen on the way, I wish I had time, I would have, would have run through the book of Judges. To show you the test and the preparation the making of a witness in the life using the life of Gideon there are two principal tests every in fact three that every witness must pass there are other things I want to talk about but Judges chapter 6 I believe Gideon was in hiding when there was an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Gideon, you are a mighty man of fellow. And he began to give all kinds of excuses. I will use you to do this and that and that. And he spoke to him. And the Bible says, as a result of that encounter, Gideon blew the trumpet and 32,000 people showed up. And when they showed up ready to fight, God said, no, this is not how I walk. I don't walk with the crowd. Test number one, whoever is fearful, whoever is still thinking about where you are coming from and you love where you are coming from more than where you are going to, he says, stay behind. The Bible says about 20,000 or thereabout went back. That group was slashed into two. The test of courage, the test of audacity. He said they are still too much. Test number two. He got to a place and then he said, listen to me very carefully, all of you people. You are about to get to the place of the water. Listen carefully. Now they were tired. They were already walking. And when they got there, he gave Gideon a formula. He said, all those who bend to lap like dogs, single them out. And all those who lie down and fetch to take it. You know what that means? Those who lap like dogs still have their feet standing. They are ready to move. They were enjoying the water, the place of comfort. After tiredness, now they had walked a distance. There were already results in their lives. But they lapped like dogs. It was just their feet, the assignment was still in view. While they were enjoying the momentary blessing, they were intending to continue. But there were those who sat down there. That means they had come. I'm not continuing again. This prosperity that I found is enough. God, do whatever with that assignment. He says, separate these two groups. And only 300 people made the list. Maybe another time God will grant us grace to really deal with the subject of a witness. Because a witness takes more than availability. There is a making. When God calls you, he does not send you. Your first assignment is follow me, not follow it. When you follow it, you will be lost. When God, God never calls a man and then says, go, follow me and I will make you. You will think that making is something that happens in two weeks. Read your Bible. How long it took to make the apostles. Three and a half years of solid mentorship daily for one day of encounter with the Holy Spirit. Look at the ratio of teaching to impartation. We have missed it in the body of Christ today. We are always obsessed about imparting on empty spirits, empty heads, no vessels. We keep wasting oil and pouring it on the ground. The Bible said when there was no vessel. So the first assignment is go and borrow vessel. Borrow not a few. Enlarge, expand. See the ratio of teaching and mentorship to impartation. Three and a half years to one day. The oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it. If the vessel is limited, the limitation of the vessel will abuse the potential of the oil. There was nothing in the house except a little cruise. Not knowing that the problem was the vessel and not the oil. Is God speaking to us? One more time, please say, I am a witness. Let's talk about world evangelization. haven't understood that we are witnesses 
we need to understand the context of our witness Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 Jesus began to speak to them about the subject of the end times they sat them and they began to ask him and he was mentoring them and telling them several things that will happen and he got to verse 14 Matthew 24 and here's what he says and this gospel everybody say this gospel of the kingdom he says shall be preached as a witness unto all nations and then the end shall come it is true that Jesus is coming soon but the coming of Jesus is dependent on many factors I hope you know that yes there are factors that until and unless they are in place he cannot come the core factor is this that is written please give us that scripture again 24 14 this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into where in all the world not for the purpose of people believing it necessarily but as a witness let it be that they had an opportunity to hear it and then i will come because judgment for sinners will only be on the basis of the opportunity for them to have had the gospel i hope you know that the character of god's judgment was revealed in scripture already how does god judge with respect to what you heard so if they were not given an opportunity to hear the gospel another template will have to be used for their judgment yes it's not going to be a generic judgment to everybody no anybody who died without christ and did not have the opportunity to hear about christ genuinely there will be another basis for judgment read your bible when jesus went to hell apostle peter was teaching us he preached the gospel to the departed saints in hades there when they believed because there was there was a promise they were left with and they died not receiving it now jesus preached to them they believed and he came out of the grave with them is it not in your bible <laughs> that graves were open and the departed saints came out they walked the streets of jerusalem from that time he stopped becoming the only begotten he became the first begotten of we the brethren hallelujah world evangelization the average believer does not know anything about world evangelization we think it's for missionaries and preachers and we think mine is to do well let me just live a good life and love God and highest just donate some money to a man of God and I think God should be satisfied no we have to culture our understanding to carry the burden of the nations to carry the burden that is in the heart of Jesus this is the kind of move that will release tremendous power. Look at this scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Is that in your Bible? It says, But is long suffering to us, word. Listen carefully, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance how many should come all so we are examining the burden in the heart of the master he desires that all should come to repentance all every nation every individual our relatives who do not know jesus he desires that they should come to repentance one last scripture matthew chapter 9 please from verse 35 matthew 9 and 35 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun God bless you.
bless you. Please give us that scripture. Matthew chapter 9 from verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Next verse. We're reading to 38. Watch this. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd and then he said unto his disciples listen now the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few prayer point pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers for his harvest has that prayer been answered there are few times in scripture where jesus gives us his prayer point he says pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers laborers for his harvest let me tell you this i have heard several teachings that relate to kingdom come and world evangelization and the move of God across the nations now please listen the character of the gospel the gospel intends to achieve two purposes number one there is the message that saves the first dimension of the gospel that believers must understand is the message that saves what is that message the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son are we together man and creation being the recipients of that sacrifice this is the gospel john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son today he's not his only begotten son he's the first begotten among we the brethren that whosoever believes in him he should not perish but have zoe that is more than everlasting life zoe is more than everlasting life i think i said that the last time i was here i said everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is not something that you get when you come to jesus it's something you get when you pass through the womb of a woman both sinners and saints have everlasting life the question is location not the possibility everybody who left the earth is still alive in another dimension is it not in your bible did you ever hear of anybody who ceased living there was only a transition in dimensions the parable of the rich man and lazarus they left the earth but they were still alive another kind of life so the life jesus came to give us even though generically we say everlasting is more than everlasting it's a quality of life in fact respectfully speaking it is not god's kind of life if you say it is god's kind of life that means there's no basis of our oneness with him it is his very life that was given to us not the kind no it is the life of god given to us it was not another holy spirit given to us because we too are holy spirits i hope you know every recreated human spirit is a holy spirit is it in your Bible? So the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you is, is the very same spirit, not another. So you cannot say another life. No. It is the very life of God that we have. It is only that in administering that life, listen carefully, the administration of that zoe life depends on knowledge it is knowledge driven to release the full potential that is in that life so you find out that because thank you my people i think you should be sitting down if you keep coming up here i will keep singing up and down don't worry may god bless you in the name of jesus christ are we together yes ephesians 4 18 says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts 
so ignorance can alienate you from the potential of that zoe life why is god almighty because he's also all-knowing so the degree to which your knowledge grows that is the degree to which grace and peace is multiplied unto you grace and peace is multiplied to you through knowledge are we learning now so it makes sense that the all-knowing should be the almighty too that the all-knowing should be the all-powerful too world evangelization i was talking about two dimensions of the gospel number one is the message that saves please say the message that saves now the jurisdiction of that message is the spirit of the human that means that mess the message that saves um another person cannot be saved for another person that's what i meant the message comes to you personally you believe and then in believing that which jesus christ did the bible says there is a deposit of the life of god within your spirit you are grafted into christ through the ministry of the holy spirit is that true born of the word but there is a second dimension to the gospel the ideology that transforms territories please listen because if you are to understand god's program world evangelization there are many people who do not understand god's concept of invading systems and i've heard people even preachers say it wonderfully but then i know that that is not accurate listen please look up god's idea is not to make nigeria like america or dubai i hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's not going to happen let me repeat myself the illusion that one day you will suddenly not differentiate nigeria and america maybe in the new jerusalem when the old head is wiped away but as far as this civilization is concerned it is it is very childish and immature to even believe that so god's program is not the physical transformation of territories yet his program in order of priority is the spiritual transformation of hearts and then institutionalizing the mindset of the kingdom are we together now listen carefully more than just the physical translation of territories it is first the hearts of men to be saved then ideologies that create an ample opportunity for the gospel now we've gotten it wrong in many regards so believers do not care who is saved or not we just believe that if the power of god and the gospel is coming every nigerian now drives a rolls royce we have skyscrapers there is order light 24 hours no trouble the president in nigeria becomes greater than that of america i agree with you it's good to think big it's good to think far but let me tell you we need to edit our priorities to know what is obtainable and what is not are we together i don't mean to abuse i hope you know that i'm a positive person believers have all kinds of ideas as to what they call thy kingdom come thy kingdom comes means number one that the life and the power of jesus christ finds expression across every unsaved heart that is number one and then number two that the ideology of the kingdom because territories are not changed by physical architecture territories are changed through mindsets and beliefs in order of priority when we begin to plant within people the mindsets that are consistent with scripture are we together now it will naturally begin to translate into value systems that translate society trying to physically change a territory without that transformation that has happened in, in the minds of people is a wasted effort it's like looking at the mirror and trying to remove what is on your shoulder by putting your hand in the mirror you correct it here and the one in the mirror corrects itself are we learning so that when People come and tell me, Apostle, pray for me. God is sending me to the nations. I tell them, okay, so talk to me. What are you really going to be doing? And they say, I'm just going to make sure. God said, go and raise me a people. And I said, I agree. I'm not doubting you. I know you met Jesus, but let me just help you. What exactly are you going to be doing? 
it is this lack of definition as to God's expectation and the clarity as to what we should be doing that has brought these various pseudo-Christian inventions around church and ministry. Believe me, God has an exact program and his power follows his program. So if you want his power, you must find out his program and stand there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Believing that one day, I repeat it again, that one day, Nigeria will suddenly magically be transformed to become Dubai and then become another city to the point where everybody will rush and come because of physical civilization that is not it our real treasure is not physical things our real treasure is the richness of the life of christ that is resident within us it is true that the nations will come but they will not come because of the dexterity of the physical environment there will be a quality of life that will emanate from the believer that will compel all and sundry regardless the physical comforts they have there will be things that they will not be able to solve with money there will be things they will not be able to solve with policies they will run to the house of God and they will the Bible says they will learn his ways we will bring forth wisdom that is beyond that which government and educational systems can bring because we're in partnership with the Holy Spirit who is the wisdom of God world evangelization why am I teaching you this listen we are going to pray and all of the miracles I will tell you why it looks like God is let me use for want of word mising his power you find out that there seem to be just few people across the body heavily anointed and it looks like there are few people who seem to command tremendous spiritual power and then the remaining just crowns and hope no that, that can never be God's blueprint it is the degree to which we align with the program of God that is the degree to which we will command the investment of his power his grace his resources and even his backing if you're with me say amen, amen. I started this teaching by singing a song that song has been an anthem of my heart for many years to see to it that the nations come to the cross it is not because I'm a man of God because you will be learning that world evangelization is really not for preachers world evangelization is not for preachers you will be learning that preachers prepare those who do the world evangelization he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men to men why for the perfecting or maturing of the saints that they the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands we see your light as it rises. Listen to what you are singing. Ask and now give the nations to you. That's the cry of my heart Distant shores and the islands will see your light As it rises on us Please write, what is evangelism? No, 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 not write, please sit, I meant write What is evangelism? Let's redefine evangelism what exactly is evangelism evangelism is telling someone about Jesus not necessarily what is evangelism <laughs> evangelism has to do with deploying any and every scriptural strategy listen carefully every and any scriptural strategy that enthrones ends up enthroning Christ in the hearts of men evangelism has to do with the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that will end up revealing if you want to add and enthroning Christ 
in the heart of man it's called evangelism so evangelism is not limited to preaching evangelism is not limited to tracts in fact the days that we live in right now conventional evangelism has been threatened by status quo or by by the new norm that we have you corner somebody and you are talking to the person they can arrest you because you are standing there and the person can you are trying to bring a track from your pocket they can say it was a pistol so the dynamics have changed there are few people today few nations where you can be given permission to park stadiums and preach what then is the strategy jesus was preaching and teaching and he said go ye into all the world is that true now then he says preach the gospel and he tells you who to preach it to all creation he told you what to do go he told you to go and preach to declare to proclaim he told you where to go all the world he told you when to go now but he never told you how to do it the how was left to your creativity and the civilization you find yourself in please listen carefully he told you what to do he told you when to do it he told you where to do it but he never told you how to do it because you would have to depend on the wisdom of the spirit past civilization to invent an effective strategy that will be able to make that happen is God speaking to us so the how is flexible the message will never change the recipient of the message will never change the urgency of the assignment will never change but there has to be flexibility to our approach and our inability to wait with the Holy Spirit to allow the how that was assigned for this generation is why there is inefficiency in reaching the unreached we are trying to use a how a template that is inconsistent with the reality of the times so if I have to depend today on packing every stadium in Nigeria and Europe it means there are people who will never hear the gospel is that true how come Islam respectfully speaking is the fastest growing religion in Europe sir and we have never seen them fill one stadium so by what strategy is that happening statistics you go and read it there are many places that experience the move of God in the Middle East and certain parts of Africa that are being invaded right now by Eastern religions invaded right now what strategy is being used we don't see crusades we don't see conferences we don't see empowerment programs yet there is a move that does not seem to be resisted we need to go back to our how we missed a very powerful instruction he didn't say go yet he said pray ye the lord of the harvest who is the lord of the harvest lord means owner the one who is in charge of this program there was one who was put in charge of this program he said pray that he will send laborers not look for laborers send laborers he sends them with a strategy this was the secret behind Joshua's conquest when they got to Jericho he did not assume that because they were prior victories for every new battle there was a strategy and when he got there what is the strategy the men are uncircumcised there is no consecration so there cannot be that encounter and he said first things first cut the foreskin of all the men that was what happened after that circumcision happened the next thing a stranger came and he said I'm ready to partner with you now who are you because God told him that no man will be able to stand against you he removed the sword and the man had to explain say no 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 I came to give you a strategy for this battle 
here is the strategy you can't kill everybody one by one that strategy worked in another battle but now it is not one by one there is a strategy that will bring the whole system down did you not read in your bible that babylon the great is fallen it says in one hour did you ever ask what strategy brings down that system that formidable system the bible says jericho was shot nothing could come in and nothing could go out what a system five chariots could stand on the fence of jericho so how do you penetrate such a system rahab lived in the wall of jericho the fence of jericho was wide enough to be a house it would have been a, a fatal battle for the nation of israel to have tried to fight directly do you look at study their security architecture and see how powerful it was the spies entered and interacted with rahab within a short time the report had gotten to the king with precision as to who came how do you defeat that kind of place no so if you think you will defeat a world with command of social media where there are voices there is a large orientation we must return to the lord of the harvest the first strategy for evangelism is not going is prayer lord of the harvest we are we are we are limited until you come and give us the blueprint pray ye the lord of the harvest how does he train people to walk faster by saying tarry ye it's in your bible how did he make the early church effective he said tarry so in your waiting you are faster in your waiting you are faster every time god says wait he only made your journey faster so now can we understand what god has been doing in this church from january till now it's a mystery that when god says tarry is a secret code he's saying i have moved you 10 years i have moved you 15 years ahead already but because the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit you may think all you are doing is just prayer no the prayer of 50 days in one day brought 3,000 souls when the Lord of the harvest came on that day of Pentecost he announced his coming with power and great grace in one encounter 3,000 people were saved Please sit down. Listen, let me tell you this. The real prayer point in this season is not God give me tea. God give me bread. He will. The real prayer point is not God make me famous. The real prayer point that commands the attention of heaven today is not oh god let me rise greater than every pastor let me be the man of god that everybody knows that is nonsense that is not prayer consistent with the heart of god the real prayer is lord reintroduce us to the lord of the harvest there is something about him we do not know hold on carefully oh dear i wish i had the time would have come to that lord of the harvest the spirit of truth himself how in the world do you plan to evangelize the globe and yet not know him the lord of the harvest is not the father the lord of the harvest is not the son the son is the cause of the harvest not the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest is the spirit he told the disciples tarry you have met the cause of the harvest but wait until you meet the lord of the harvest Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with you, the glory of the risen Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with you, the glory of the Let the weight of your glory come us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it rain us. Let the weight of your glory. The weight of your glory flow. 
everyone who was to be used as a witness for this world evangelization the first thing that happened was he was introduced to the Lord of the harvest I hand you over to the Lord of the harvest so he comes and he begins to teach you he comes and he begins to guide you he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will reprove the world who will do the reproving you don't have the power to reprove an arrogant world you don't have the power to convince an arrogant world the disciples tried it it did not work they tried it did not work Peter himself who did not have the strength he had seen miracles but he denied Jesus when the witness denies Jesus what then happens to the one to be witnessed but when the spirit of truth came the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies look at those timid individuals running up and down when they caught Jesus only John the beloved remained and Mary they all ran away they saw power but they had not met the Lord of the harvest when the Lord of the harvest came in power please listen he did not come to a people who were loitering around he came to a people who are tarried they didn't tarry for one day old. 50 days 40 days of lecture 10 days of extra waiting and then he came now when the day of Pentecost was fully come ah, when Peter saw them they said these men were drunk Peter said no this is that that was the beginning of his sermon this is that and Peter with the mastery of a well mentored student he began from prophet Joel down to the psalmist and he said that same Jesus you have crucified today he has been exalted as Lord and Christ the Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this gift for the promise for the promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as the Lord our God shall call world evangelization is not just about moving from house to house to knock to tell people you are a sinner repent they will arrest you and jail you and kill you you will die early and it will not be persecution it will be the death of a fool there has to be a receiving of a how from heaven listen our victory in today's world is not from our oratory let me tell you the people who turned the world upside down were not that we think that ministry and world evangelization will happen just because we can speak english just because we went to school no sir there has to be another strategy our assignment in the place of intercession and prayer is to wait until he comes and he comes with our how so for you he can come and say my strategy for your efficiency as a witness is go around jericho seven times and while you are going around it does not make sense do you know why i'm telling you this years ago the holy spirit spoke to me before internet became a mainstream that people would put messages and do all of this it was in the place of prayer and the Lord spoke to me he said no my strategy for you will not be what was at that time it was a major part of the revenue for a ministry would come from sales of you know CDs cassettes and all of that and the Lord said it will not be like that for you he says put it online that is my strategy my angel will take it to the nations this was this was over a decade plus I stupidly believed because he gave me the how can I tell you, you will fail as a witness until you stay to receive your how. One of the major assignments of prayer is not just for petitions, it's for alignment. Lord, where am I and where are you? Let prayer bring us together so that the how will be downloaded. When my how comes, don't sit down again. 
you pray this is how you know that you have come to the end of your prayer you don't stop till you receive the how what is the blueprint for the next season many believers do not understand the dynamics of prayer nor the superior power that is invested in the ministry of strategic prayer with understanding you don't pray until you are tired you pray with the goal of receiving how the saints triumph in time past because they would stay with God should I pursue Lord what should I do they will remain there until the how comes can I tell you the how is a trigger when you receive it it comes with power it's shut up in your bones you cannot be silent there are businessmen who have not received the how to be able to do kingdom business that beats Babylon to its knees so we go by secular invention trying to use a cart to carry the ark and we meet many casualties on the way God's end time agenda is to reach the nations through this twofold witness of the gospel enthroning Christ in the hearts of men and bringing through our excellence and the dexterity of our results the mindsets the value system of the kingdom across territories if we fail in this we are not effective witnesses and our assignments is not just thank God for secular formulas but you must know that secular formulas will produce secular results we need to go back and say Lord you are the Lord of the harvest how will this happen and he says for you you are going to have a bank and the name of the bank will be this this and that I will place an anointing on your bank and you will bank with kings and you will stand up and open a bank and people will say you are a banker they are right but they are wrong you are a banker who is executing banking as the how for your witness now that banking you you will see that in that banking is the mandate to reach the captains of that industry who would not come to an evangelist they perceive to be poor so God gives you the royalty and the regalia of the palace so that you can reach them for someone your how can be an investment of the tremendous healing power of God upon your life because you may not have the excellency of speech and just by speaking people will not listen but he will honor you with a demonstration of the spirit in a way that confounds principalities and powers you have received your how now time to go so you get to a place and say good morning and someone gets up from a wheelchair good afternoon and a blind eye opens good night when you leave they will follow you all men seek for him now in the simplicity of your heart you can tell them I came with a simple message Jesus saves Jesus heals how could they deny it when your evidence is standing in front of you I forgot to tell you that the ultimate index for being an effective witness is that you must have your evidence no witness is truly a witness until your evidence stands in front of you in Acts chapter 3 when they healed the man at gate beautiful are we together now Acts chapter 3 from let's see 316 Acts 316 they were summoned by the council and they began to make uh, they began to speak and, and talk in defense he says and his name through faith in his name had made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all 17 and now brethren I word that through ignorance he did as your rulers and all of that go ahead uh, let's try 20 there's something I'm looking for keep please keep scrolling down to get to the point where he says the the Bible says that they could not deny it because the man was standing right there in their midst that's what that's the scripture I'm looking for they couldn't deny the result because these were witnesses with their evidence the man who sat at the beautiful when you say God sent me to build a bank and they look at you and say you are a carnal person instead of you to be preaching you are building a bank God says don't worry your evidence will soon be standing your gospel is powerful to the degree that you preach with your evidence standing in front of you So there are many people who do not receive that how they do not meet the Lord of the harvest and then they start a church and then 
people come and they say the Lord sent me to transform your life five years the people are not changed and they'll say you know what I thank you for this your call I don't doubt your call you are not fake but I, I want my life to be real I'm going to move somewhere else quietly and look for a solution and now you are wondering you know many times I see pastors and they say apostle what am I doing wrong and I tell them what you are doing wrong is not the call what you are doing wrong is you do not understand the dynamics of being called and being sent just because you are called does not mean you are sent you are called to Jesus you are sent to the world so you must understand the difference between your being called and your commission. When he calls you, it is follow me. When he makes you, then he sends you. The empowerment is not when you are being called. The training is when you are being called. It is when you are being sent that you are empowered. There are many people whose call is genuine, but they are not yet sent. You can be so effective in your following Jesus that people will tell you, you are too effective you should be sent now and you can graduate yourself from the school of the spirit and be shocked that you know jesus so well but you have not met the lord of the harvest follow me why did he introduce them to the holy spirit again when they had been with him i, I, I know jesus i agree i have met jesus i agree i love jesus i agree you will be shocked that you will still be ineffective because Jesus is not the Lord of the harvest. He is the cause of the harvest. If it is the harvest you want, Jesus will grant you that access to now be introduced to this personality called the Lord of the harvest. Sir, you are a man of the spirit and you have seen the great hand of God. I do not know one preacher one kingdom person doing so much for God who did not encounter the Lord of the harvest the generals who have gone to be with the Lord today they cried and called his name and said make sure you meet the Holy Spirit T.L. Osborne Catherine Coleman great men even within our soil here and those that continue to do exploits they will tell you the reason for their exploit is because of their relationship with that Lord of the harvest the how only comes from him he is the Lord of the harvest it is not your harvest it is his harvest so you must wait until he gives you the blueprint hear me for some of you by reason of this prayer you need to shut down on what you are doing and return back and say spirit of the living God I, I am tired of five years of rhythm rolling I've been doing things I thought it was you but now it's becoming clear that there is the evidence that should have come is not there rather than running up and down I will stay like my pastor has taught me spirit of the living God I am waiting the how of my destiny revealed to me and God will speak to you and say dear young lady your assignment is connected to your marriage until you marry Ahasuerus you cannot reign as Esther now you begin to prepare for marriage unusually and people say what is this your passion it's not just about a desire to marry he has told you your how is connected to the palace and until you arrive at the palace you have no assignment if you are Mary, your how is to make sure your womb is protected to be able to carry Jesus. If you allow anything happen to that womb and you cannot carry Jesus, then you have no assignment. The first miracle this afternoon is the prayer to say, Lord, it is clear that the how has not yet come. The stagnancy in my life, the confusion in my life, it is clear that the how i know that you have called me and i love you but could it be that i have ignored the ministry of this lord of the harvest the spirit of grace the holy spirit changed my life he's revealed the how part time per season i remember when my time in zaria was wrapping up I started having these these promptings of the spirit because you see the way God works with me the month of June September and December are prophetic months I have worked with God in, enough to know you must discern the seasons where his voice comes 
prophetically his voice can speak every day but know when the waters are about to be stirred that has it is through your consistency of staying with god every time june september december i'm not careless with those months he's at liberty to use any time but by my dealings with him it's not a doctrine it's a personalized dealing that this is how god has chosen to walk with me do you know the season where he speaks he's not always speaking no he speaks the bible will tell you the 10th month and the fourth day the word of the lord came i began to sense it in my heart i said lord in truth i would tell you i didn't know whether i was abuja or somewhere i just knew that it was time to expand the work and to do all of this for three years i struggled with the lord praying and praying let me tell you something with god you don't pray until you are tired you don't pray until you are tired you pray until how comes i remember i took the time praying and praying and here's what happened i will tell you it's it's a miracle do you know when i finally left zaria it was unplanned for I went to South Africa for a meeting, returned back for a meeting in Lagos, and then I now had to rush back to UK where the last people who left London before they shut down for the pandemic. So I returned back to Abuja, rushing to do the miracle service in Zaria when they announced that there has been shut down, locked down for the next three months. That's how my how came up. That I was there and I said now just did a video to tell them okay I love you people and um, there's there's lockdown and so everybody and I used that time to begin to pray and the Lord said the season has come I said God where again what is all this whether it was Abuja or Jos or anywhere I would be the last person to want to be in Abuja believe me I love Abuja wonderful place but I just said no no no, no. I'm not sure I'm ready maybe let me go somewhere else and I remember one day, see, it is a difficult thing to live in the silence of God. When God is silent, keep praying. Don't assume a voice that is not there. Satan is a master at speaking in the silence of God so that you will think he's the one. But prayer can filter it. Prayer can always cause the viper that is hiding in the wood to come out. So prayer is a tool for discerning error. If you hear and you are not sure, stay and hear again once have i spoken god is not at he, he, he can allow you to hear even if it's five times provided you end up letting you know that all power belongs to god i took out time praying praying and through one or two prophetic confirmations that came from great men of god and then something happened one night i remember the lord now gave me an instruction he said by the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the globe lord this is not what i'm asking you for clarify i'm grateful for that one i sent immediately they brought the map i began to pray intensely praying on those things and then the final confirmation came i had set my i was not even praying just enjoying worship and as i placed my head i just saw the vision the map of Abuja this when you are coming towards that stadium side I still don't know even the names of this this you know and I saw that that map like the city gate that's why you see the poster that introduced this I said look for that gate and replicate it immediately I saw it I said this is that Lord grand grace the how had come I didn't care what else was not there the one who brought the how is responsible enough The path of a spiritual man is a very strange path. There will be many seasons of unimagined silence in your life. Never mistaken your tarrying for delay. There is a difference between delay and tarrying. Both of them are the same physical activities but sponsored by different spirits. Delay is sponsored by a demon spirit. The intention is to destroy you and to allow time cheat you. 
tarrying is an advantage so that you will be able to piece together the intelligence and the resources you need and after that tarrying you will quantum leap into dimensions that you never imagined i can tell you this let me show you this in the life of jesus from age 12 we do not hear about jesus again until age 30. what was happening from that time john the baptist remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing moses remained in the wilderness for 40 days tarrying is an art of victory don't ever misunderstand it when god calls a solemn assembly and tells the people tarry you are in sync with how god works hear me people of god from january up until now you have been praying and fasting i do not know the level of spiritual discipline you may have see it's easy to pray and fast maybe when you are a student or a younger person because whether you were fasting or not you almost be the same thing in terms of food to eat you may like most likely be once a day anyway is that true the trouble on your head by reason of limitations will force you to the altar so it was very easy very very easy when there's no school fees there's no house rent there's no whatever you don't need any ginger of an attack or whatever the trouble in itself is self-motivating you can pray until you fish out solutions from the realm of the spirit but now when you have many responsibilities it is a greater demand and a greater sacrifice and you have endured this to pray to fast I have seen the benefit of waiting upon the Lord I have seen the benefit of waiting until the how comes no matter how long wait till you get the how did you hear what I said your pastor has waited Jesus was waiting when they were ahead of him six hours ahead of him those with the boat they had gone whereas he was praying you would call it delay but he got up immediately and started walking on water and within a short time he had caught up with those who went and to the point that they looked at him and said if it be thou bid me come and he said come and Peter also started walking on water listen to me we are going to pray you are wrapping up your time of prayer and fasting but i'm here to join faith with your man of god to instill this as a spiritual culture more than just the end of a program if you end it as a program you've aborted a powerful strategy for victory in your life every time god sends you call the lord of the harvest and say father i am prepared but i cannot go until the how comes you will know the how you will know that the how has come because both the instruction and the anointing will come the instruction and the anointing hallelujah the instruction and the anointing for some of you your witness is in the area of your career right now but it is not supernatural because the how has not been given you are still working with Sophia human wisdom I am a banker buying and selling that is wonderful unless and until you obtain the wisdom that comes from above and now add it you will see the wonder working power of the spirit Nigeria is in a very trying moment right now even politically and as always there are many opinions coming from everywhere but believers must pray rather than making a lot of noise we need to pray first we are going to act but acting without prayer will only recycle pain because we will judge by the flesh we this week we should use this same formula nationally lord we do not trust ourselves we are inconsistent in our minds and our hearts and frail and limited but we depend on the lord of the harvest send us our how and when it comes with bending determination 
God will enthrone himself. We are not the first to be in this situation. Some of you right now, you are in a financial situation. Don't just get up and say, I'm in a financial situation. I need his, his, his business strategy. I listened to a business, uh, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, seminar. And he just said, just do this. I agree and I respect what you heard. But in this world of spiritual triumph, ignore the Lord of the harvest and recycle pain. Ignore the Lord of the harvest and recycle negative seasons in your life. But you can come to the how. And sometimes it can be a ridiculous instruction. You are a businessman and things have gone down. But the Lord is going to give you an instruction. And say take a sacrifice and bring it to the life of your man of God. I reject this voice. How can you come and meet me and say I should do this? Listen. Not every pain destroys. When a doctor meets a patient who is almost dying, the doctor will bring out a syringe and add to the patient who is already crying. Why will you add pain to somebody in pain? In that pain, there is a chemical that will flow through that injection into that person and it will begin to bring healing. So you will see a, a, somebody who is in the hospital almost as if he's dying and yet the doctor with a heart full of compassion it will be through the channel of that pain and that sacrifice it can happen many times and yet recovery happens mysteriously not every pain is from the devil there is pain as a gift that announces the change of seasons sometimes the pain of carrying isaac is the pain that makes you the father of nations you must learn to discern and interpret pain when you give a patient injection the goal is not to destroy that patient but sometimes you can take five doses a miracle service on sunday a woman came who had a, a spine one problem and she said she's had over 200 and something injections i couldn't believe it will i stand to allow anybody inject me like that 200 and something what part of my body will be left 200 and something injections how many veins are in my body for some of you you are in a season right now where it looks like spiritually you are in icu and you said lord come and he brought you through the pain of fasting and you are saying but lord is this how you help people to fast and pray can't you just give me money what is it about money you cannot give me is it my rent or my house why are you what is this thing just bless me directly where are the fishes that have coin in their prophetic you know and god is saying just go through that the pain of fasting is like that spiritual dosage you've been receiving from january to february to march to april to may now to june you will step out of this place and see a burst of vitality within your spirit. Amen. That after your prayer and fasting, someone will call you and say, since January, I've been looking for you. You will now know it's not a demon that kept him. God kept him up for you because you would have misused that money, misused that opportunity because your spirit was not even sensitive. The devil would have led you to make wrong decisions and you would have been in trouble. The Lord instructed that I should give you a house in Metama. I don't know you, but I will obey God. And you will hold it and say, it's a lie. God said, what is it about a lie? What, what is it that is, I can't I do it? And just while you are saying that somebody parks a car in front of your house. And just when you wake up and allow to wake you up that you will report yourself to the police. And say, I'm reporting myself now. So that nobody will say I stole money. And then God will now tell you, I had the power to do this, but my interest is your heart, not the things. I know what I'm saying. The way of the spiritual man is mysterious. Matthew chapter, John chapter 3 and verse 8. 3 and verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. Thou cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone born of the Spirit. 
the way of the spiritual man you can't create a natural sequence to it there are times you will see him mysteriously rushing and there are times you will see him waiting and that wait can be one year two years and you are wondering what is it about your life and why the silence then God will bring 10 years in one month and put for you Even so, come Yeshua, come. Even so, come and take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face, my love. Even so, even so. Come, Yeshua, come. We're calling the Lord of the harvest. We need him like never before. Even so, come, Yeshua, come. Even so, take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face. My Lord, even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. We will wait upon the Lord, for in His presence is fullness of joy. Listen, my first encounter with the power of God, please sit down. I used to go every night and just pray and just pray and return back. Every night and just pray and return back. Every night and just pray. I used to watch Benny Hinn that time and I would see this man come to minister and just stand and people are rising from wheelchairs the power of God it was like a mirage I said how could a man host God to this dimension I had the privilege to have some old CDs of generals and people and I would listen and watch them and say my goodness what is this such spectacular display of the investment of the spirit upon a man I continued every day I did not know that every day and every time of prayer was like a spiritual register you were signing because if the cloud be full of rain rain does not happen until there is sufficient evaporation and condensation biology teaches us that one night I remember clearly there was a dear lady I was praying and there were other people who used to pray then. We used to call it Lawn Tennis Court then in Zaria and ABU there. And then a lady came. And this lady came to, I don't know what brought her to seek counsel for something. I don't know. I can't even remember the lady. And I remember I just stood in front of her and my hands began to shake. I had barely lifted, I had just lifted my hands and this lady was like a pack of card on the ground. I was almost afraid. I said, I hope this lady did not enjoy herself. The way she fell as though she was dead. She got up again. And then I started seeing spectacular manifestations of the Spirit of God. I said, this is the same thing I saw happen to people. And then I remember that the same Lord is rich unto all. That if you will pay the price of alignment, obtaining grace from the Spirit to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for power, nothing then robs you from carrying genuine authentic spiritual power you can walk with God to a point where he will give you the keys of nations and give you the keys of territories that you can command dominion over nations and territories you will not look like it except that it was given 
that you will speak and kings will respond because the word of the Lord is upon your lips let me tell you prayer is powerful in preparing you to be an effective witness today I thank God for the privilege of the preparation and compared to where I'm going he's still preparing me and I'm grateful and I have obtained grace to remain and to stay until we are built and furnished for that harvest can I tell you in our lifetime we will see nations saved in one day because there will be such spectacular demonstrations of our witness the Lord himself will move upon us and move through us and move in us and bring nations at a standstill did that not happen to joshua in the bible do not belittle yourself there are people in this end time who will carry wealth equivalent to gdp of nations and by that wealth they will bring nations to their feet in one day but the training of every witness is intrinsically the same but we will give ourselves continually at chapter 6 and verse 4 to the word and the ministry of the word and prayer no matter what you are called to do called to be you cannot do it without submitting yourself methodically to the ministry of the word and to prayer pray without ceasing to immerse yourself in the word in fellowship and in partnership with this Lord of the harvest as he reveals your how per season per moment per level the reason why we are bold to do and say the things that God is doing through us is because we receive the how there is no fear Moses if he told you how he already told Moses Pharaoh will harden his heart so when Pharaoh was acting like a beast Moses was not surprised he didn't leave disappointed it was part of the how but by a great and mighty hand in one day he brought the nation of Israel something that 430 years of captivity and murmuring and complaining could not do one day do you believe God can use you that much do you believe God can walk with you that much? Do you believe God can trust you with the grace and the anointing for nations and territories? You don't have to be a preacher alone. Some of you here, my dear worship people, God can give you one song that becomes a revival anthem for nations. A song you did not compose. A song that came through the place of prayer. Most of the songs you hear me sing, I'm not a musician. No. You should know that by now. But there is a way you can release your spirit and in the realm of the spirit you will tap through spiritual frequencies and bring songs that don't die because they were not they were not framed from this realm holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our these are some of the spiritual songs that come from the place of the spirit lion of judah the lamb upon the throne we hail you most high let me tell you how this song came i was caught up in the realm of the spirit one time and i was hearing the angelic choir singing this song that's how i came with it I didn't write it. Lion of Judah, the lamb upon the throne, we hail you, Most High. hear me we're going to pray let me find somewhere to wrap up I already begin I'm beginning to sense a very strong anointing here so we'll find somewhere to pray hmm. 
the end time army has a three formation strategy the end time army has a three formation strategy number one the first formation of the end time army is the emergence of prophetic intercessors write it down the first strategy for the end time army is a sudden emergence from every church every region every nation of ordinary people like pastor was saying some of them uneducated some of them inexposed but men and women who have found grace with god an emergence of prophetic intercessors ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 30 and 31 30 and 30 i sought for a man among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none verse 31 therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have i recompensed upon their head saith the lord i sought for a man there are men who single-handedly will carry the spiritual burden of nations and literally manipulate the events of nations to line up with divine prophecy from their room you don't have to sit on the throne to be a king there are many people sitting on thrones today that are not in power prophetic intercessors you will see an emergence from your church prayer groups prayer camps women of prayer prophetic intercessors those who will even get born again late and you will think god cannot do anything much with them until you see mama at 80 praying for eight hours generating energy from the bowels of our spirit this is the first formation of this end time army write for reference isaiah 52 from verse 1 and 7 1 to 7 isaiah 52 1 to 7 the emergence of prophetic intercessors awake awake put on thy strength O zion oh beautiful garments you know jerusalem and all of that so you read it we're not going to read it for time's sake but that god himself is planting his raising prophetic intercessors and let me tell you some of you the reason why god drew you to participate in this prayer and fasting program is to help you reveal your ministry to you some of you did not even know that you were called into the ministry of prophetic intercession where god will answer you by saying Libya and you will hear from him for the next three months that becomes your prayer project every night and suddenly you hear that there is such a move of the spirit happening in Libya most people do not understand intercession let me tell you the life of an intercession is a strange life ask Anna the prophetess in fact out of all the ministries of Jesus the one he still kept today is the ministry of the intercessor that he's still seated at the right hand of the father and still making intercession for the saints the moment intercession is in place there is no limit to what the Holy Spirit can do there is no limit you think the Holy Spirit cannot save people you begin to intercede you think the holy spirit cannot invade nations begin to intercede pray ye that you will send the lord of the harvest that is the first formation pray don't assume the lord of the harvest has come pray pray number two the second formation of this end time army are the ones i call the sent ones the sent ones the sent ones the sent ones Matthew 10 16 the sent ones behold I send you forth as sheep 
in the midst of wolves therefore because you are sheep in the midst of wolves he says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves this is the only place in scripture where we see God recommending that you study a serpent as a strategy for survival a serpent has always been an animal or a creature that is 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 laden with deception every time you hear serpent it always connotes satan or evil but it says now i'm releasing you into the cosmos because you are sheep among wolves i hope you know that a sheep does not have a horn the only means of defense is the wisdom it gets from the shepherd other animals can fight but the sheep cannot fight if it ignores the wisdom and the instruction of the shepherd a sheep's security is in the ministry of the shepherd while shepherds watch their flocks by night so every time it is night the flock must depend on the shepherd to watch them it is night time right now in our world every sheep must listen to their shepherds the chief shepherd is willing to watch his flock by night I send you a sheep among wolves how does a sheep stay in the midst of wolves have you ever seen watch National Geographic Natural Wild and you will see that any time a, a sheep is a universal prey for any wild beast is that true whether lion leopard hyena cheetah whatever the moment they see a sheep there are some animals allergic to others they don't eat them but not a sheep a sheep is a choice delicacy for any any wolf or whatever it is and he says i send you a sheep that means if a wolf sees you no negotiation no destruction no discussion the assignment is to steal to kill and to destroy he says therefore be as wise as serpents do you know what this means this is now the balance because i just mentioned prophetic intercessors they don't need wisdom they just need diligence to stay with the spirit and pray but if you find yourself among the sent ones you will need more than prayer you will now need to borrow the concept from cosmos that is what it means to be as wise as a serpent that means don't be like the serpent but you can borrow the formula and the strategy you are a businessman you have prayed but don't it is not a crime to listen to warren buffett you are borrowing the strategy they are unbelievers but there are principles they have that make things work in the cosmos it says be wise as the serpent that means you have to interact with them you may need to study their materials you may need to submit to mentorship under their wisdom and their schools however remember you are a sheep you are only borrowing from a serpent for efficiency are you getting the point now now this is where this second group of people have missed it a lot there are many christians failing in business inefficient as far as their duties are concerned and their excuse is spirituality there are many people who will come and tell you god called me to be a great ceo they know nothing about finances leadership administration excellence they have not learned jesus himself preparing to be sent forth went to the temple to study things that he was coming to abolish and bring to an end so why did he study it then there are people by reason of this teaching you may need to go and get further certifications to prepare you to be efficient there are people by reason of this teaching you may need to go and subscribe to secular mentorship under very intelligent people with proven records that is why first things first god deals with you to prepare your heart so that even when you are there among wolves you are not corrupted not by their language not their way of life if you are daniel how will you reign if you ignore babylon if you are joseph how will you reign if you run away from peril because they worship the god of egypt so many believers do not understand relational principles and you will be in an environment where you are the only child of god in the if you have to mention jesus to demonstrate the life of christ you are not a true christian there is a dimension of your life that can reflect Jesus even without you saying it. Be wise as serpents. 
imagine a sheep go somewhere and stands in the midst of wolves and say i am a, a sheep i don't care i believe that I, I won't tell lies i can't tell these lies what happens to him he would die not because the shepherd is not strong he ignored the advice of the shepherd he says be wise as there are many things about a serpent to learn the first is that all animals when they kill their when they kill their prey they still leave traces and evidences but a serpent swallows the digestion happens inside so you do not even know what it ate until you catch it at that point and then where it kills is different from where it eats these are all strategies to learn a serpent will sting and be patient and the animal will run somewhere in the bush then it will go and quietly eat it alone and climb up a tree and hang there for three months until the digestion happens what kind of creature without legs cannot run with the laser speed of a cheetah does not have the ability to dig holes yet every other most animals including especially human beings fear it more than that there are people who will run away you will run away from a dog even if he wants to bark you you'll be bold and you'll fight it but once you see that creature no legs it does not even have many points where it can sting only a, a small projection and yet you run away so what is it what attitude it's afraid of you but it gives you an impression that it will not run away from you be wise that means even when you are threatened by something in the presence of cosmos you never show fear you return to your secret place that's where you say lord behold their threatenings and grant your servant that through your holy hands you don't cry before them you stand strong and stand bold you can now cry before the lord lord this person is using divination clearly and he has vowed to destroy me i have defended you standing in truth protect your name upon my life and then the bible says the holy ghost fell upon them they were filled with faith and courage again and you return back to the office and god takes responsibility for your defending his name be wise as serpents is someone learning we need to bring this balance in church there are people who during office hours the most productive period they just hold their hands and they start praying they are praying and shouting whereas the company is losing millions and thousands of naira and dollars and they will sack you and throw you away you have ignored the wisdom of the shepherd there are prophetic intercessors you are in the temple oh honor the prophetess so any time is valid pray without restraint and roll on the ground but now when you are a sheep among wolves you have to study how wolves behave this is not compromise this is adaptation let's wrap up is it three o'clock am i right on that oh dear okay the last group the last strategy Haggai chapter 1 from verse 4 these are called kingdom financiers please listen I'm revealing to you the tripartite formation of the end time army the first group prophetic intercessors the second group the sent ones the ones who will directly invade cosmos and institutionalize the consciousness of God in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities but the third they are called kingdom financiers Haggai 1 four to eight is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste now therefore thus saith the lord of hosts consider your ways ye have sown much listen and bring in little ye eat but have not enough ye drink but are not filled with drinks ye clothe you but there is none warm and he that earned wages earned wages to put it in a bag with holes seven thus saith the lord consider your ways he said go up the mountain and bring wood and build the house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified keep that scripture there don't assume you've read it let's look at it carefully the first instruction is not to bring wood it tells you where the wood is found where is it found 
up the mountain do you find wood on the mountain You find wood in the forest but he says this kind of wood you have to enter a system where exchange happens the mountain is not only the place of buying and selling remember when exchange was going to happen between Satan and Jesus he took Jesus up the mountain into in fact and said let's exchange there so he's saying for this group of people you want to bring the wood that builds my house master the art of going up the mountain he says don't return empty-handed you are going there with an anointing you are going there with products and services you are going there with creativity mountains represent spheres of influence he says go up the mountain there is a particular mountain where you find wood he says bring wood from there use that wood you have brought to build me a house and I will be glorified listen this is a prophetic word for someone here you may not even know what has driven your passion for financial prosperity you have prayed prayed and repented and felt guilty because people have made you feel that this is my passion for money is it that i'm obsessed is it carnality i'm interpreting it for you it is the burden of a financial apostle there is something upon your life looking for you and he's saying go up the wood apostle you don't know how many times i've failed in business don't worry you didn't attend this program that's why now that you are here when he tells you go up the mountain and bring wood it means you did not go empty-handed there must be something you carried that will help you to fell that wood and to bring it down and then to come and use it to build a house go up the mountain for someone you have been ignoring this instruction that's why all the resources that is supposed to have funded the work of God that's why pastors today have stopped the work of preaching and are begging around for money why because somebody has refused to do his assignment if somebody had gone up the mountain to bring wood you can say pastor I'm overriding this this budget for one year let's focus on the ministry of the word and prayer let there be no limitation whatsoever without bragging and making noise many people accuse pastors of financial compromises on one hand I blame them but on another hand they are doing the assignment of someone who has failed is someone hearing for some of you that's why God brought you to Abuja you are now in the mountain but you have refused to learn the art of cutting that wood the house of God has not been built the program of God has not been advanced and there are others who went up the mountain and brought wood and ran away from the house of God they received the empowerment to rise up the mountain and because they were not mentored they just believed that every man of God is fake who talks about money believers must be mentored to understand the purpose of the kingdom well God has given them that God empowers us for three principal reasons number one to live a comfortable life number two to provide financial resources for kingdom advance It's not a favor it is a responsibility for every witness who understands God's program and who loves him sincerely it should not be something that happens at a special moment it should be part of the mentorship construct of every witness in Islam they are taught by default the wealthy people know that as God blesses you whether you are a serious Muslim or not there there has to be a portion of your resources for the propagation and and, 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 and with respect to that agenda that is a beautiful understanding let me tell you the truth the kind of wealthy believers we have in this city in this nation the body of Christ should not have any reason to be in want believe me I know what I'm saying now it doesn't mean to sit down and keep claiming people's things we must take responsibility but the key is to educate and enlighten believers to understand that as God blesses you listen this is all of you how much how many foods can you eat how many cars can you drive God cannot be giving you a billion dollars just for yourself you are smarter than that how much will you spend in your lifetime 
if you travel every day how many nations are in the world there must be an agenda bigger than that when he gave you the gold from egypt is because you will build him the house in the wilderness never forget the purpose of the goal you can use the goal to do two things to build an image and say this god brought me out of egypt or to build the house of the lord whether it's for god or satan you will build an image eventually whether an image of a god or an image of jesus christ for some of you here i know you are prayer warriors for some of you here, you have received prophetic words from the man of God laboring. Now, I'm, God sees my heart. I'm teaching you truth from the word. There are many of you here. It is possible that none of you has come with a seed. I'm not talking of you are in trouble and you want to tap to come out. That's different. Because there are many believers who, once you see piles of seeds, it is because they are coming to negotiate and there is a place for that but i mean maturity spiritual maturity to know that this is part of the blessings of the lord that from january till now the lord opened doors for me 200 million 300 million and you take something and bring to the man of god i honor you as my prophet and i honor you for the grace of god i see it as a responsibility to see that you are never in want while you feed me as a kingdom responsibility not coercion not manipulation are we together yes i made up my mind from when koinonia started and even until now i prayed and i said lord give me the privilege to be the highest giver for many years in this ministry i i stand by the god of heaven and i'm telling you this kingdom financiers go up the mountain bring wood build God a house there are people today who have been able to raise when I got to find out how much money went in circulation during the election period primaries and the rest I just said oh dear Lord God of heaven how many churches how many mission agencies how many platforms that can mentor and build and bless people I said Lord there has to be a strategy out of this thing please empower those who love you and know you and have the integrity to walk in truth and righteousness but there are people some of you have failed in your assignment that's why it looks like we are limited God is calling you by this program it's time to go up the mountain go up the mountain is not to hustle go up the mountain is not to carnally move just trying to make sure you make money anyhow you will end up in jail if you take that so that way remember the lord of the harvest again back to him to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise for some of you you will need to find a financial mentor with proven track records to guide you and help you and show you some of you will need to unlock the potentials from within your spirit and come up with superior products and services yesterday when i was done teaching our school of ministry students one lady walked up to me she now sells jewelries i met her last year when i went to preach for a redeemed church and she told me that she had this vision and she kept seeing the 12 stones that represent the 12 tribes of israel 12 you know topaz all those stones and from that she kept praying i told her to keep praying until god speaks to her and in the place of prayer she had the idea to start a jewelry business she now brought all the 12 stones she's converted all of them now to superior jewelry she runs a jewelry store i looked at it it was so beautiful pure gold pure the 12 stones you know she had converted it into a business i just lifted one that looked like i'll throw it up i said how much is this when she told me the amount I wanted to say I was almost saying back to sender for what this this thing I mean women you know what I'm talking about I mean you just pick that thing I won't tell you how much but ah that's an amount that um, you need faith to even hear but then I was praying for her and she just came to show me to say that which I saw 
it has become this now it is now she's ready for the anointing for favor are you seeing now she's ready for the anointing for visibility now i can pray and the anointing can find a place because she's expanded and prepared vessels and oh dear did i pray i prayed with all my heart lord open the gates of the nations for her she now deals directly with dubai some of these guys that make it for her and you know has customized her own collection tomorrow this lady will dress kings and will bring the money and remember and say it was you i came to meet the person who brings the child is the person who brings back the child too if he dies so don't run away from the prophet just because you have a child remember something can happen to the child if you lose your relationship with elisha Gehazi may even though he holds the rod of elisha he may not be able to bring the child back the one who prophesied the arrival of the child be wise enough to maintain that relationship so that the day something happens you can still return is someone learning this is already a prophetic word for someone there are many in the body of christ who receive prophetic words men of god will pray pray and fast upon them as god blesses them and that child is born off they go they run away they are sarcastic they they talk and act as if men of god are a nuisance and then the day the child dies Gehazis will come holding a rod it may even be elisha's rod and you will be surprised because it was not about the rod it was about the state of the heart and the covenant with god are we together now watch this for these three categories of people more than your physical preparation when you understand your place whether as a kingdom financier as one who enters the system as a sent one or one who funds the efficiency of that army or all it is possible to have all the tripartite assignments are we together now yes according to matthew 25 god can take away the talent of an inefficient person and add it to one who multiplied it well so it is possible to start out just as an evangelist and be surprised that 10 years into your ministry the assignment of a kingdom financier has been added because someone failed and his bishopric cannot be left like that there are many people today who you will see transitions in their mode of operation in ministry their faithfulness has earned them the right to carry other spiritual responsibilities for all of the categories you will need empowerment this is where we find a resting place and even to pray spiritual empowerment and impartation is a very deep mystery most people have not understood it unfortunately unfortunately most people have not understood the mystery of impartation you call this a miracle service this you will receive in the name of Jesus Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8 Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8 the Lord sent a word to Jacob say Jacob and it lighted upon Israel say Israel so Jacob is a person but Israel is a nation that every time God intends to reach Israel his strategy is to find Jacob and reveal that which he intends to communicate to Israel and even deposit the investment of that grace upon Jacob so every time you see Jacob anointed begin to rejoice because it's only the starting point not the finishing point of that anointing remember Psalm 133 the oil starts from the head of Aaron but it does not remain in the head it flows to everyone aligned and connected how many of you have stood before the shower do you lift your leg to be above the shower your head is the only part that needs to be there and the body is patient and happy in advance why because the water from the head will reach even under your feet 
once the leg removes itself and detaches itself from that organism you can be sure that you cannot bath is that true but the whole body stands but there has to be only one part of the body directly facing the shower and yet the intention is to bath the whole body as it flows from the head the entire body is rejoicing and everybody waiting for their turn with joy and you will receive so much abundance the water will even be flowing no part of the body can retain the water because of the abundance the head is lavish enough so you don't fight because you see it on the head and the hand is saying i'm the one who put on the shower just be patient from the head it gets down can i tell you that grace god has put upon your man of god that grace god has put upon us by the election of grace the days of superstar christianity is coming to an end i tell you sincerely as ministers of the gospel we must be responsible enough to understand the purpose of the anointing it's not just for yes thank god for the honor that follows the call but let me tell you more than that there is an assignment that we must not forget the oil on your head will not serve you much until it flows to the body so as we stay in the place of prayer as God continues to invest that grace upon us we run back to the body and say as privileged stewards we have received this and such as we have freely we give so that the body will now be efficient this is one of the things that I've come to do tonight the Bible says in the parable of the ten virgins five wise five foolish the suggestion of the bridegroom is that go to them that sell and buy not everyone is in want there are those that sell you don't buy it with money you buy it with honor you buy it with discernment you buy it with meekness you buy it with recognition but there are them that sell believe me when you are struggling in any area of your life you don't have to die there check the body of Christ with discernment there are those that sell there are times that you can go around a city looking for maybe a part of a car or something they will tell you it's not in Abuja and you will suddenly find one woman as the only supplier and you can meet and say ma can I partner with you and also start supplying sooner or later that part does not become scarce again because from one person he or she was benevolent enough to share their ideas oh I get it directly from Dubai I get it directly from UK now you find out that everybody has it now with abundance always comes abuse but it's better to have abundance at least all through in scripture every time you see abundance you also see abuse whether it is Solomon whether it is multiplication of five loaves and two fish the side effect of abundance is abuse that's why God trains men thoroughly before he exposes them to abundance are we blessed so he sends a word to Jacob and it lights upon Israel Philippians 1 7 we're wrapping up Philippians 1 7 Apostle Paul was speaking over the church in Philippi and he said even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bonds he says and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel he says ye are partakers of my grace you know what it means to be a partaker a partaker is not the original recipient but the partaker benefits as much as the original recipient you see that in the life of abraham and lot god called abraham alone the bible says and lot went with him genesis 12 when we get to genesis 13 everything abraham had lot also had you would not even know who was called and who now tapped but lot made one mistake he detached himself from abraham and plunged into limitation until he found himself in sodom numbers chapter 27 from 18 and 20 numbers 27 we're about to pray numbers 27 and the lord said unto moses please look up it says take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit already and lay your hands upon him is that in your bible we're reading to 20 and then it says set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 I like this I like this please read with me one to read
thou shalt put some of what so honor is transferable he says they will not listen to him take some of your honor and put on him you may have heard me say you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another this thing you see right there is a grace if you don't have this grace no matter how sincere you are nobody will listen to you believe me when I tell you that there are many sincere people who cannot command influence over people because that grace for honor is not there Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as they commanded Moses we're about to pray the next few minutes in this place we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to deposit something tangible upon our spirit just like pastor said it is true that our possibilities are defined by the graces that we carry upon our heads thou anointed my head with oil but it is my cup that runs over he does not anoint the cup you know what is on the cup by what is on your head I mean you know what is on your head by looking at what is on the cup there are many of you here you have prayed you have tarried you are coming to the final moments of your prayer and fasting listen more than the revelations and the intelligence you have received you must receive the engracing to now defend that which you are proposing to the world a witness without evidence will only be a failed one if you want to be a faithful witness then you need that word of witness but then with your evidence standing with you is someone ready to pray please rise up on your feet when it's time to pray I beseech you by the message of God that we pray that we pray with understanding I'd like you to thank the Lord for the word you have heard several dimensions of truth communicated by his spirit go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart Lord I understand even clearer that I am a witness there was a man sent from God his name was John the same came for a witness to bear witness to the truth that men through him might believe Someone is praying. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer point number two. Father, all it takes to make me an effective witness, may I receive it right now. Please go ahead and pray all that it takes is it prosperity is it influence is it revelatory grace all that is required for my effective witness to make my contributions as far as kingdom come is concerned i obtain grace someone is praying I obtain grace, I obtain grace. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good because he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him God was with him no man can do these things except God be with him someone pray now I'd like you to pray Holy Spirit reveal your ministry in my life in a greater dimension you are the lord of the harvest you are the spirit of truth reveal your ministry in my life afresh someone is praying
I open up my spirit man the impartation and the engracing that will make me relevant in your end time program I obtain grace someone is praying you are a man of God here pray Lord grace for the altar grace for the altar to communicate and dispense the truth of the kingdom with power and grace you are a businessman pray you are into fashion pray you are a media person pray a sport person pray a politician pray please pray please pray Yours is a kingdom, yours is a power, yours is a glory forever. Amen. Yours is a kingdom, yours is a power. Before, listen please, before I pray for you, I want you to pray one prayer. Listen, do you know, there are many people today who are unable to do much for the kingdom simply because God has vetted them and he has found out that they do not have the staying power to still love him in the midst of plenty. They do not have the staying power to still love him in the midst of results. They do not have the staying power to love him as he announces them. So he will vet them and keep them in a certain position, not because he hates them, but that is the best position to allow their efficiency versus their love for him. You have to pray. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Many of us want to rise. Many of us want to command power and influence over nations and territories. This morning, my dear people um, from Zaria, they came to celebrate my birthday and they were going back and they did something as a gift. I don't know where they found it. Photos from when the ministry started, you know, when I was almost looking like a dead man, wearing all kinds of things like two people's materials on myself. And they gathered all those things together and put it in an album up until I think few weeks ago I don't know how they did that and as I opened it tears filled my eyes and I could almost with every turn of the page I could remember things God told me in those seasons and those levels can I tell you if God has discerned you will disappoint him and you will be a casualty to the body it's not Satan he himself will beg your growth as a sign of his love because your soul is more important to him than your fame your soul is more important to him than your result. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, grace to stay and remain with you. The grace to stay and to remain. Someone please pray. The grace to stay and to remain. The grace to stay and to remain. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 12. We're still praying. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 12. Do not forget this scripture. One day the Lord showed me in the place of prayer. I'd like you to please read. One, two, read. So the Lord alone did lead them. And there was no strange God with him. It is possible to carry God and something else. Like Rachel did. In the Bible, remember Rachel, the wife of Jacob. When it was time for her to go, she took some of the gods of her father to go with her. 
there are people who carry God and something else if he must be God all by himself in your life then you must have the unashamedness to destroy every other thing so the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with him is someone still ready to pray father i dethrone everything that has taken your place in my life i declare a, a fresh recommittal please pray a fresh recommittal for some of you you have exalted men more than god some of you you have exalted money more than god some of you have exalted preaching more than god you have exalted ministry you have exalted marriage business money you have exalted fame god is calling you to return to the altar please pray if you must see his glory he said sanctify yourselves that was the instruction he gave moses to give them you want to see my shekinah and my glory sanctify yourself Please pray. It's all about you. the song for your glory it's not about me as if you should do things my way you are Lord and I surrender one more time it's all about you not resting on the base what is really carrying my Bible is this part is that true however because these rods have donated themselves to hold this as you see this you also see them are you getting what I'm trying to say this is Jesus Christ lifted up but it is impossible to look at him and not see the one lifting him most people do not allow Jesus to be lifted in their lives because they feel exalting him will so diminish you. John the Baptist did not say that I would diminish or disappear. He says that I will decrease that you might increase. So that when people look at me, 
their focus will not be on me somewhere in their minds they will thank God for me like Galatians 1 24 says and they glorified God in me but more than that they'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love sweet sing See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Now let me pray for you. My first prayer tonight is for those who are directly called into the fivefold ministry listen we need to trust God to eradicate weakness on the pulpit I submit to you there is a lot of powerlessness on the pulpit I'm not talking of Pentecostal jamboree and gibberish authentic spiritual power that sustains the ability to both bless and lift people to the place of destiny you cannot be an effective man of God and lack the requisite level of spiritual power it is impossible so my prayer there are many people here I know and I presume that have been called into the ministry God has called you men and women alike missionaries pastors prophets and yet that increasing Luke 1 I believe and verse 45 I hope I'm right on that he said how shall these things be seen that I know not a man and then he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you how shall I suddenly step into an effective ministry the power of the highest how shall I now begin to teach with power and fire the power of the highest will overshadow you do not downplay the ministry of power especially in this end time can I pray for you you are in ministry I like you to pray and say Lord empower me in a very supernatural way empower me in a very supernatural way empower me hallelujah I'm going to pray for people this please tap this gentleman for me come I want to pray for you the Lord has heard your cry and I want you to believe that what God will do in your life don't belittle yourself I am telling you this God has a mighty plan for you and his hand is strong upon your life even in this season can I pray for you father I lay my hands upon your dear son in the name of Jesus empower him afresh let a strong I'm stretching my hands on this person and I'm seeing is somebody else in the congregation the power of God is coming on please bring them out this is what I'm seeing I'm laying my hands on him yet I'm seeing light touching somebody within the congregation I'll begin to pray for that one person within the congregation and listen it's a call of God you have been seeing this in your dreams you've not really started I wouldn't say you've started ministry fully but that hand and that call is upon you please as the anointing of the Spirit comes upon that man I want to have him outside I want to pray for him but for this gentleman in the name of Jesus I declare let it be a new season for you right now even by the power of the Holy Spirit you will experience the grace of God in supernatural dimensions now I want to pray please help them Jesus whether you are an usher or not please do well just help them so they don't injure themselves just bring them out slowly I want to activate the prophetic I truly believe in the ministry of the prophetic is one of the most corrupted ministries of the fivefold unfortunately but it does not mean that simply because the prophetic has been corrupted it should be thrown away men and women together there are many of you that grace has been crying in your spirit ah this grace is coming on people now father 
release that grace right now i find the ambers of the prophetic men and women all those who must step into that ministry receive that grace now help them please receive that grace now take that grace please bring them out i release you upon you let that anointing and that mantle accurate prophetic void of divination void of manipulation in the name of jesus christ not tampered by flesh one of you in this choir one of the ladies here i'm seeing the power of god coming on you help her please in the name of jesus christ please bring them in the name of jesus accurate prophetic void of manipulation god is raising mighty people with that grace even in this church there is a gentleman who will start running now please hold him and bring him out the power of god is coming upon him this is this is a ministerial anointing is helping please a strong ministerial anointing there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no is showing me a mantle for restoration i'm seeing the number seven there are some of you who have lost things and you are asking will it ever return back right now the anointing is coming on you some of you are already in front here father i don't know where they are manish kadi kabarata ziata ele breke help them please my god makepatos kalikata let there be a restoration let there be a restoration of virtues restoration of dimensions you want touch you want touch in the spirit restoration of resources like the hair of samson some of you it is growing back again the eyes that see the ears that hear mighty things that were once done through your life in the name of jesus supernatural restoration i release upon you i release upon your family actually a grace for wealth that beyond productivity and value beyond the ability to exchange value for a reward there is a real grace for wealth I'm about to pray for you 
because someone in this place this is why you came for this meeting and this thing must come look some of you have come from backgrounds and families where at the normal sequence if you are to follow the normal sequence of growth financially you may spend your lifetime and never be empowered however there is an advantage we have in this kingdom i want to pray please receive some of you have been called to be financial apostles some of you have been called to carry to to bear the ark lord i don't know where they are but in the name of jesus by your mercy those who will go up the mountain at the count of three may this man to fall on you some of you are pastors some of you are career people lord the grace that will command territories to yield their increase receive it right now at the count of three one two three take that grace take that grace take that grace that anointing sir that grace is coming on your wife i'm seeing that grace come on her lord i don't know what you are doing but do it oh god let let that supernatural mantle for finances supernatural grace for wealth in the name of jesus help this woman i'm seeing oil this woman wearing yellow that oil is resting upon her receive that grace right now by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah i want you to believe this because you will be surprised to see what god begins to do in your life who is kemi is there someone with the name kemi is it kemi or so i'm hearing a name Kemi, is there someone with that name? Just find somewhere to stand. I want to pray and speak over your life. What do you do, madam? Huh? I want to pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please stand up. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Hear what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. 2020 was not a good year for you. It was a year that you did not see the best but god is saying i am restoring you this is what i'm hearing in my spirit i stretch my hands and i declare in the name of jesus let that grace come upon you that makes for supernatural restoration in the name of jesus you are also kemi can i pray for you in the name of jesus i decree and declare madam look at me are you married father in the name of jesus every pattern negative pattern connected to your family in the name of jesus i come against it right now by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing someone on this row the power of god is coming upon you you are a lady i just saw this right now please i'd like you to bring the person for me In the name of Jesus if she's if she can't come don't worry just leave her there I will speak over her life I decree and declare ah, there are many of you this month of July coming I'm seeing an anointing on that month and I'm not I'm not speaking lightly the month of July this woman standing near you holding both of her hands I'm seeing oil coming on her head that's right the woman wearing blue in the name of Jesus she's one of these people that the month of July will speak greatly for I declare by the anointing of the spirit let that grace rest upon you I command July to open for you in the name of Jesus I command July to open for you I command July to open for you now hear me everywhere you are standing in one minute I'd like you to begin to mention everything that must leave your life now the Egyptian that you have seen I'm releasing my faith with your prophet please begin to pray right where you are I like you to declare I'm releasing my faith with you that in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God these Egyptians that you see today that you will see them no more forever 
Lord, as you have done it for your servant, my prophet, you will do it for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I just sense in my heart, I, I don't know if I should do this, but as I, as I raised that prayer request, I just had the cry of a baby. I just, help them please. I just had the cry of a baby. This is what, and the Lord is telling me that this is a miracle that he's releasing for certain people. Lord, I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus, there will be sounds of rejoicing in this church believe me when I tell you there will be sounds of rejoicing in the name of Jesus as I hear in my spirit so I declare let it be so and let it be established let it be so and let it be established let it be so and let it be established let it be so and let it be established let it be so and let it be established in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me anyone holding what belongs to you and has not released it by the power of the prophetic in Luke chapter 18 the woman came to the judge who did not fear God nor regard man and say avenge me my adversary and the Bible says for a while he will not attend to her but for her importunity her continuous coming you have prayed in the name of Jesus I agree with you between now and the next 30 days by the power of the prophetic it must get into your hand it must get into your hand in the name of Jesus Christ and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death I need to rebuke that spirit that creeps around families and destinies and just destroys people sometimes at their prime father if there is any family here where the spirit of death is roaming around intending to lay hold on anyone by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus may death pass over you it shall not come near your dwelling the mark of the blood is upon you in the name of Jesus hear me please be sensitive to these prophetic words as I'm declaring them some of you have been in this city for many years yet the gates have not opened for you the truth is almost nothing is working you are in this city people will come and receive whether jobs open doors and it looks like nothing is happening the Lord put this in the heart of your man of God and I've come to join faith with him let's speak to these gates every gate can open it depends on who is speaking in the name of Jesus I decree and declare as touching the one who sent us lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors I decree and declare the two lift gates of this city I declare that you part hither and tita in the name of Jesus Christ be open for a triumphant entry in the name of Jesus Christ just because you are in a city does not mean the city is open for you no he said blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I've prayed concerning wealth but let me pray over favor please receive this one the proof of favor is not money no the proof of favor is when God gives you the hearts of men even the hearts of kings father in the name of Jesus you are able to help and bring favor upon men I declare by the mercies of God the one who helps men beginning from today all who are connected to this vision help her please and those who in the name of Jesus Christ are here who came for this prayer cruise and those who are connecting by way of internet in the name of Jesus the son of the living God receive that grace for favor now I declare that systems and structures shift for your sake receive that grace for favor it will speak in your finances it will speak in your family in the name of Jesus Christ 
now hear me we are getting to a most important part of this prayer we are wrapping up how many of you believe in this vision how many of you believe in this ministry how many of you know that God is able to stretch and enlarge the tent of this ministry we are going to pray the last time I came God opened my eyes and I did bring a prophetic word that God is expanding and enlarging this ministry and that God was going to give his servant and the wife visibility even within this land like never before I have not come with a different prophetic word it is still the same thing I have come with we are going to pray listen let me tell you God has placed an anointing upon this man God has placed a grace upon this man and there is a major role I am telling you that the man of God has to play in this city as touching the move of God and what God is doing it's not because I'm standing on this platform I am telling you the truth by the message of God now in the next two to three minutes you are going to pray for this ministry from the depth of your heart the depth of your spirit Lord higher grounds Lord higher grounds Lord higher grounds enlarge the place of the twelve of, of your dwelling spare not to the left and to the right are you praying the members of this church pray pray for your vision it is not your pastor's vision it is your vision too and his dear wife strengthen the family multiply the investment of your grace upon their lives are you praying pray for the pastors that stand and support him lord raise faithful men raise mighty men and women in the name of jesus the son of the living god strengthen him when he calls answer him hallelujah 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 praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord now hear me I'm the one asking you to do this and I've not spoken with him after this prayer let me let me give you a very powerful secret listen don't end this prayer and fasting period without hearing from God to find a strategic prophetic seed and so I'm not going to tell you what it doesn't have to be today but I'm teaching you a powerful secret when Peter the angel came to Cornelius speaking about Peter the encounter that will lead to the salvation of the Gentiles it says your prayer and your giving two things brought that intervention now when it has to do with seed sowing and sacrifices unfortunately I know that people have manipulated, they have made merchandise of the gospel, taking advantage of people. And some of you here probably maybe across your various spiritual concerns may have been victims of men of God and prophets and apostles. But don't think just because people have made merchandise of this, that does not mean this is a powerful principle. I would be wicked and be lying to you if I drop this mic and do not teach you this truth. I know that your man of God has taught you. Are we together? You do not end a strategic program like this without prophetically connecting with your seed. Psalm 50 verse 5, Gather my saints unto me, they who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And that includes those who are following online. Probably there are people who are following and want to connect you should find a way of reaching the ministry if there's a way they can put the authorized account number i don't know how it happens here but you know in you know 
back home and ministry anytime you make announcement like this scammers also here and up they go trying to manipulate people innocently and so on and so forth praise the name of the Lord but let me challenge everyone here complete your fast not just with prayer but with a sacrifice is different from a seed it's easy to give Ishmael but if it is Isaac you have to give with grace hallelujah I can tell you strategic periods in my life as a man of God defining moments where certain realms came to a permanent close at the instance of a seed with understanding if you do it as a mere donation or do it as a name you are only wasting your time you will recycle pain but with understanding even the father wanting the harvest of us gave a sacrifice Jesus was more than a seed he was a sacrifice he was his only begotten son now he has many sons that have been called into glory and the thing about a seed is that the technology is that you reap what you sow but believe me you do not have to reap it in the form you sowed it meaning you can sow money and reap favor you can sow money and reap speed because God connected another spiritual technology to sowing and reaping that God is able to give your seed another body so you can sow pain and not reap more pain at the point of resurrection God will change the body for pain to be joy so you can now sing he has turned my mourning into dancing that he has turned even my sorrow into joy are we together one of the ways you end negative seasons in your life is to sow them as seeds because the old heaven and the old earth can pass away with everything in it so when you are tired of a season you can wrap that season in a seed and sow it that's why it is dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know whose season is coming to an end and you don't allow that season to die you pick it up like Gehazi together with the destruction that came with that season hallelujah every time you see money in church it's more than naira and cobble and dollars and pounds those monies are trays carrying the pain of people carrying yokes carrying curses carrying negative things that people are overturning through the mystery of death and resurrection hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me pray over your life in closing thank you this is already past four father I thank you for the honor and the privilege to have been able to share with your people challenging them on your end time agenda thank you for the months and the months that have been invested in prayer thank you for all you have blessed and lifted thank you in the name of Jesus for your choice servant and his dear wife and all the pastors that stand to lift up the hands of the man of God I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the privilege of priesthood be blessed in Jesus name I decree and declare that everything that once was once a thing of shame and reproach let it be rolled away from your life in the name of Jesus Christ and every grave cloth that is on you like Lazarus I decree and declare prophetically I remove those grave clothes from you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God everything at work in your life that is inconsistent with the speakings of the word I decree and declare let it be cancelled right now you will see the hand of God in your life you will see the goodness of God in your life spiritually financially in your home your place of work in the name of Jesus and as for this ministry you will only keep going from glory to glory from grace to grace from power to power and I pray for everyone who attended this meeting today you will be at the epicenter of God's program in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you in Jesus name now please listen the Lord is putting it in my heart just two things to do to make an altar call and then to just speak over people who may be trusting God for healing I'll just do both in about a minute or two please spare me that time if you are here and you are saying apostle I need Jesus I need Jesus I need to rededicate my life or you are making a first decision I know you have been standing please just endure for this one more minute and we're done 
I believe with all my heart there are people here who are saying, Apostle, please give me an opportunity, whether online or here. And others are saying, I love Jesus, but I want to use this moment to rededicate my life. If you are here, even if it is only one person, the Lord has put it in my heart. Let me give you an opportunity to come. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here. If there is any such person, don't sit back. Don't be ashamed and don't wait for someone to be the first to come. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I truly want to make my ways right. Is there someone like that? Please, gallantly, I want you to walk and come here very quickly. Very quickly. God bless you if there is such person. Please come and stand here very quickly. I truly believe that there has to be at least one person and if you are that one person please come and stand don't be ashamed and don't be afraid don't be ashamed come to Jesus now while that is happening God bless you let them come and stand here God bless you as you come those who are trusting God for a healing miracle I'd like you to please lay your hand uh, on that part and if it's a part of your body you cannot touch please do just lay your hand on your chest. Those who are coming for the altar call, please do come quickly. I want to pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for making this decision. Those who are making this decision online, Jesus is right where you are. And as I lead them to pray, please pray same. And the Lord himself is nigh on to all that call upon him. May I request, gentlemen, that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high to the heavens and say after me convincingly so say Lord Jesus I have heard your word I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I believe in Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord and as my King I receive eternal life into my spirit the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i walk in the newness of life in jesus name i pray thank you heavenly father for these precious ones you have brought them to yourself keep them even by your spirit they go from strength to strength because they appear in zion in jesus name i pray amen and amen may i please request that you follow the gentleman waving his hands god bless you they'll have a word with you and then he will be back so let's do this quickly in the name of jesus anyone here trusting god for healing you've heard a terminal illness whether you or anyone connected to you in the name of jesus be healed right now may the healing power the life of jesus rest upon you and may the spirit of grace quicken you in the name of jesus let vitality and health surge through your body i declare be healed right now the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ thank you so very much sir the lord honor you and thank you for this opportunity the lord bless you all in jesus name i pray dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.